Peggy 12. Hi, my name is Thomas Johansson and I'm the project lead for European Universalis 4. Uh, today I will tell you a little bit about how religion works in the game. Uh, religion has always been one of the main drivers of conflict and gameplay in all European Universalis games. And we have implemented lots of religions, everything from the various forms of Western Christianity, such as Catholicism and Orthodoxy, to pagan religions and Buddhists and Hindus, for example. And the way it works is that, first of all, your nation has a religion that is given from the start. But then, on the other hand, the citizens of your country, the provinces or the peasants, can have a different religion. And this can, of course, either create a strength or conflict. If you have a country that is very unified religiously, you can use this. You can tax your peasants a little bit extra. You can try to drive your country so that it becomes focused on that religion and you can fight for that religion. But then you conquer new areas, for example, and the country can become more fractured. You can have different religions and you get a choice. You either have to focus on your country's religion and try to force the other ones out, or you can try to maintain a nation where all these different religions are tolerated and you'll try to manage it that way. And that will be a huge challenge. And of course, you can use religion in other ways. You can, for example, pick religious ideas that will help you to use the power of religion to fight your enemies. If you pick the proper ideas, you will get reasons to go to war with your religious enemies. What's new for European Universalis 4 is that we've tried to make every country unique, as we've said several times over the, the past, past year. Uh, and we've also tried to make the religions unique, and, and especially some of the major religions have, have almost gotten like its own unique features. Uh, if you take the Orthodox Church, for example, if you play in an Orthodox country, you have to contend with the power of the Patriarch. And the power of the Patriarch, it goes up and down depending a little bit on what's happening in your country and, and how you play. And if the Patriarch is powerful, that will help you get lower revolt risk and, and get more control over the peasants in your country. And you can also increase your manpower and build bigger armies. On the other hand, that will also divert some of your tax income to the church, so you will get poorer. And then, on the other hand, if you go to, say, play Muslim country, they have a different feature again. They have something called piety. And the interesting bit is here that how you behave versus other Muslim nations or other nations will change how the Muslim world views you. So if you go to war against the heathens, against the Christians, for example, or the pagans, your piety will go up. And as your piety goes up, your armies will become more powerful, they become more fanatical, you can fight better, and you, you will get better missionaries, and so you can convert the heathens, and these kind of things. But on the other hand, if your piety is low, your armies might not be as good. For, for example, when you can release yourself for the, from the power of the priests, you will get cheaper technology costs, for example, a little bit more money. So it almost becomes like, are you a crusading state that goes against the heathen nations? Or are you sort of like an internal state who wants to manage your kingdom just like any other kingdom? And then, of course, we have the Western Christians. And for me, the way the, the Western Christianity has, has kind of a unique mechanic that has always been one of the most interesting moments for me when I play various games of European Solis in the old games as well. Uh, and, and that's what happened when the Reformation comes along. You have this kind of nice, stable country, everybody's Catholic, everybody's happy, you don't, don't really have any problems. Uh, and then you get these kind of the, the events happen in your country as you play the game. For example, you can hear about preachers coming up and preaching that. You know, the power of the Pope is perhaps not the end of everything and the most important thing out there. And you can you have a choice, right? You can just throw in jail and everybody will be happy. Perhaps the peasants in the local province will be pissed off for a while and you have to fight them. But then, of course, you can let him go on because, I mean, you have your hands full. You don't want to kill any more peasants today. So you let him just talk. But as you do this, we have a new value called religious authority. And Religious authority, it, it will sort of slightly increase over time. Uh, and, and that's a common value for all of Catholicism. And as this value goes over a certain level, you will get a more global event where this, this annoying priest called Martin Luther will appear somewhere in Germany and nail his thesis to a church wall. And after that, everything changes. You will get Protestantism appearing in that province. And it will at least for a few years, it will spread like a disease through Europe. You will get your nice Catholic country will no longer be Catholic. Half your peasants will be Protestants. 
And as this come up and you get religious wars and conflicts, you will make a choice as the player. You can either try to fight the tide, you can try to defend Catholicism and roll back the change, you can even be counter-reformed and really sharpen the edge of your Catholic religion. Or you can sort of embrace change and become Protestant and, and leave the power of the Pope, incurring the wrath of the Catholic Church and of course of the local population in your country who choose to be Catholic. So it's really a game changer in this phase when, when Catholicism splits in Protestantism and then reform comes along. And, and I think that that shows really how religion is a driver in, in the game of European Universalis, both for the Catholic countries but also for the rest of the world and you really have to get a feel for how the religious wars and conflicts in the era came about.